everybody and welcome to Restored Hope. I am Andrea Kemp. Today is all about a patio update. So we recently moved and we recently moved into an apartment from our home because we moved states. So with that comes the fact that we are in a smaller space and we need kind of smaller space designs to fit our lifestyle. We love to be outdoors, we love to sit on the patio, and the table that we had purchased was just too big, too bulky, we couldn't move around it. We have a toddler who is everywhere at this point, and we just needed to update it. I did not want to spend any more money on another table um, after just moving. You all can imagine how just ridiculous it can get budget-wise. So I decided that I'm going to make something myself. I will tell you, if you have the creativity and a little bit of know-how and a really, really good hardware store, trust me, you guys can pull this stuff off too. So come along, join me and watch how we transform the space and the new updated table. So for this project, I am using some items I found at my local Lowe's. And this is a 17 inch wooden dowel with the hardware already in it, so you don't have to deal with any of that. And a 24 inch diameter wooden tabletop. I never start anything in the morning without coffee, so that is my rule. And I also concocted a little mixture for pest control because the flies are terrible here right now and I am working outside as you can see. I always, 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 always can't state that enough, put down protection. Uh, drop cloth um, or this plastic will do just fine. I probably should have used something a little heavier just because it was a little windy or breezy that day and it kept flying up on me, but that's okay. And then I take a thorough uh, cleaning or wiping down of the table uh, top just because there's particles on it that I want to get off and I don't want it to be a part of my stain. And then I take a sanding bar or sanding block or sanding sponge, whatever you want to call it, and just get a really nice um, finish to it. It was a little bit rough and there were some fibers that were coming up um, that I did not want to come through my stain and I didn't want to have to restain afterwards because I noticed these coming up. And then just to get it prepped up, I used foam cups. They were cheap, they were easy, and I had them on hand, so that's why. I did use a pre-stain. Um, this does help condition the wood. It also opens up the pores of the wood and can help the stain penetrate a little bit better. You can also use water, but I really like using this pre-stain, especially when you are using an oil-based stain. Um, you can get that at your local hardware store as well. This goes a long way. I think you'll have this can for 10 years, unless you do a ton of staining projects, but it is pretty watery um, when it goes on, as you can see. So use gloves. It can get a little bit messy. And really with any project, using gloves is not a bad idea. So I just dip this into a lint-free cloth and I wipe it onto the surface. I get the whole surface coated with this and I let it dry for about 15 to 20 minutes. Always check the product instructions to make sure that you are using the specified dry time. Each product could have a little bit of a different dry time. This one I think was about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I just went and I turned it over and I did the bottom portion of this tabletop once that was done. Now for my stain, I actually chose Minwax product again, and this is an espresso. Again, this is an oil-based stain, so make sure you are wearing gloves because it is messy and it's also pretty stinky. So if you can be in a well-ventilated area or outside, that is preferable. You just don't want any of these odors coming up. And even though it is hot, I have a fan going on me. It, I think that day it was close to 100 degrees. Um, so, but regardless, I did tear this cloth because 
I don't like waste and if I can get several projects out of even the cheapest things then that works for me. I'm just taking the stain and applying it in the way of the wood grain. That's really important. You want to make sure that you are following the wood grain. Um, also, I tend to have the weirdest faces when I paint or stain, so enjoy that. And then I just do this to the entire top of the piece, making sure that I go back and fill in any spots that I had missed. And that will just speed this up for you guys because you, you don't need to see me doing the entire thing in real time. It probably took me about, I don't know, 10 minutes per side. So not too bad. And I did, before I got to the end, take a clean cloth and dried off the excess stain. Um, I did this because one, I had my arm over there and I was going to start to get some stain on my arm and two, I just didn't need all of that stain on there and I think it just leaves a better finish if you can wipe back some of the excess. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below and hit the little bell for notifications. If you like to see DIY or furniture restoration, this is the place for you. So here is the dried side one and I am absolutely loving it. I think I let it dry for about 30 to 40 minutes. Again, each manufacturer's label is going to say something different, so just follow that. And you never know what you're going to get with a piece of wood, but I just loved this kind of tiger striping that was going on here. And again, after this was dry, I just tipped this over, put it on the foam cups again, and went ahead and stained the other side. I followed the exact same process. And I realized about a quarter of the way into the second side that I had forgotten my gloves, so I just went ahead and grabbed gloves and put those on. If you notice that my hair is down now, I had a moment to shower. Uh, having a little toddler around, I have to shower at any opportunity I get. So while it was drying, he was napping, and I was able to shower. Such a lovely thing. And also, you know, it got a little bit breezy, and that's why I said I probably should have used a stronger drop cloth, um, but it is what it is. I already had this set up, and I just needed to go with it, but I probably would have put something a little bit more stronger down, like a canvas drop cloth or something else. In Florida, you just never know what kind of weather you're going to get. There could be a thunderstorm and then 10 minutes later, it's gone and it's a beautiful day. And while I am letting my top dry, I'm actually going to paint in Annie Sloan chalk paint the legs and I'm doing this in old ochre. I had a can left from another project, so I decided this would be perfect um, after deciding to do a two-tone instead of staining the entire piece. And I'm applying it with a zebra angled detail brush. I love these zebra brushes. They are so easy to use and they are pretty inexpensive for the quality that you get. You can pick them up at um, Home Depot and also online. I did not sand this down. The dowel felt pretty smooth to me. 
it seemed like it was a really good finish so I didn't have to do any sanding down to this so I am just applying a liberal coat and I only needed one coat for the entire four set so I did not have to go back and recoat and I'm really sorry for some reason this uh, painting is not in shot so you just get to see my feverish face working um, the bottoms is were the hardest part and I finally after the fourth one got the trick down of uh, doing all the bottoms so Because I'm adding the rope to the outside, I wanted to go ahead and measure out how much rope I would need. Uh, this took me a second to get around the diameter of this tabletop and it kept slipping on me. It was driving me absolutely crazy. But after a few times working with it, I was able to uh, get enough rope so that it wouldn't slip and measure the entire diameter. I decided to do three, I don't know what you would call it, lengths of rope, uh, I don't even know if that's right, um, to go around um, because I really thought that three would be enough to cover the entire side. And I am clearly having some major issues with this rope. So um, my recommendation is if you have a big bunched up thing of rope, try to get it all settled out first and then attempt to do this because I was on the struggle bus for a little while. I enlisted my very helpful hubby to hold the tabletop for me as I hot glued the rope all around the perimeter of the tabletop. And I really wasn't putting a ton of glue on because I didn't want any seepage to come through either the bottom or the top. And so what I decided to do is put not a lot on the first layer and then on my subsequent layers I went ahead and put a little bit more on and that actually helped bond the other top layer together if that makes sense. Sometimes with hot glue it will dry nice and clear and other times it just feels like you can see the glue so I didn't want to see the glue at all. And I really wanted to make sure that there was a firm hold. I will tell you that two weeks down the road, because of the Florida heat, some of the glue did start coming off. So I have since repaired that with some um, E6000 glue to any of the spots that came up. So what I should have done here is actually just done a mixture of the hot glue and the E6000 glue um, for just a lot stronger bond. And because this is in our, you know, our, on our patio, it's hot and it can get up to temps to 100 degrees. So you just wanna make sure that you have something that will really hold up in that heat. I brought the tabletop inside to put the hardware on to put the legs on and I will try to explain this as easy as I can. So basically I just wanted to find center. So I measured the lengthway of one side and then I went and did a cross hatch the other way. And this way I am actually able to mark the center. I knew that 
that I wanted my hardware to sit in about an inch from the edge, so I just marked an inch in. And then I took my hardware piece and I found the line for center and I just placed the middle hole right on that line and I marked where I wanted the bottom to sit. And then I just went in and marked all four holes so that I can um, do some pilot holes before I screw in the hardware. I repeated this process on all four pieces of hardware. And before I did my pilot holes, I went ahead and put a piece of tape onto my drill bit so that I know how far I can drill in. This is a super, super handy trick to do. You don't want to puncture through the top of anything. So a quick piece of electrical tape does the trick. And then I just go ahead and make my pilot holes. This drill bit is really tiny, so just make sure that you're not using a ton of pressure, otherwise you will break off the drill bit into the actual piece of wood which I did on one end. So I had to do a quick little uh, emergency, let's get this out so that I can screw in the holes. But as you can see, I took the markings of the pilot holes that I made and I'm just going around and making the holes with the drill. put my hardware back on to the bottom and secured it with the four screws that it comes with. I have to say that I just absolutely love DeWalt power tools mainly because they give you these extra little things in their products to help like this light isn't that magical we are doing this at night of course there's light up above but it's just really nice to have that extra little help along the way with projects so thank you DeWalt and then I just screwed in the dowels again like I said they already had the hardware attached so I didn't have to worry about any of that and these just screwed in perfectly And as I was putting the fourth one on, I did notice that some of the paint was chipping off and I needed to do a little bit of touch up. No big deal, so I just grabbed the can of paint, the paintbrush, and just did a quick little update. And here it is. I just absolutely love how this turned out. I love the two-tone. I'm really glad I did that versus staining the entire piece. And it fits just perfectly onto our patio. It's lightweight, we can move it, and we can get around it with ease. Thank you so much for watching. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe down below. And also follow me on Instagram where you can see some behind the scenes of all the projects that I do and for some extra content.